All right, you guys need to check out this video that perfectly lays out how the richest man in the world bought the largest social media platform that manipulated the algorithm to influence the results of perhaps the most consequential election of the 21st century. Now, I talk about Elon Musk and the war on disinformation all the time on this show, but I've never seen a video laid out so perfectly, so concisely, showing step by step how we got here and how Elon Musk became Donald Trump's pawn. If you guys have watched my show for a while, you know that the moment I realized Elon Musk had lost his damn mind for good was after Paul Pelosi got hit in the head with a hammer, and Elon Musk used his newly bought social media platform to boost an article saying Paul Pelosi was beaten by his gay lover, despite there being zero evidence. I remember clicking on that article and seeing another article saying Hillary Clinton used a body double. Now, they perfectly lay out that moment in this video, and that is what blew my mind. So, drop a... This is the story of how the world's richest person, the owner of Tesla and X, bought the global town square, then corrupted it before using his immense wealth to help elect a convicted felon. April 14, 2022, Elon Musk makes an unsolicited offer to buy Twitter for $44 billion. He claims the site has become politically skewed and says, for Twitter to deserve public trust, it must be politically neutral. October 27th, the deal goes through. The next evening, a far-right conspiracy theorist breaks into the San Francisco home of Democrat House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, intending to kidnap her. Pelosi is away, but the man attacks her husband, Paul, hitting him repeatedly on the head with a hammer. Paul Pelosi escapes with his life, but requires surgery for a fractured skull. While most people take the chance to decry political violence, the new owner of Twitter, Elon Musk, posts a tweet sharing an entirely false claim that Paul Pelosi was in fact injured in a drunken fight with a male prostitute with whom he was involved. Musk includes a link to to a false claim on a website that has a history of publishing conspiracy theories, including a story asserting that Hillary Clinton is dead and has been replaced by a body double. Musk's post is retweeted 24,000 times before he deletes it. November 18th, Musk's Twitter starts to unlock previously banned accounts. Misogynist far-right influencer Andrew Tate was permanently banned from Twitter in 2017 after urging women to, quote, bear some responsibility for rape. Now he's back. Tate posts, I've decided to fly to the failed state of California, walk into Twitter HQ and tell at Elon Musk he's a legend on my way. Two months later, Tate will be arrested in Romania on suspicion of human trafficking, rape, and forming an organized crime group. December 8th, three members of Twitter's Trust and Safety Council resign. In their resignation letter, they cite research that found slurs against black Americans and gay men jumped 195% and 58% respectively since Musk's takeover. Three days later, the remaining members of Twitter's Trust and Safety Council are dismissed. Musk then tweets that, quote, my pronouns are prosecute Fauci, a reference to a conspiracy theory that the COVID crisis was exacerbated by America's top infectious disease doctor. December 16th, having claimed claimed he's a free speech absolutist, Musk bans at Elon Jet, a Twitter account that tracks the movements of his private jet using publicly available data. Musk also bans the accounts of a number of journalists who have written about at Elon Jet. February 12, 2023. Ahead of the Super Bowl, both Musk and President Joe Biden tweet their support for the Philadelphia Eagles. Biden's tweet is seen 29 million times, Musk's just 9 million times. Incensed, Musk leaves the game early and calls an impromptu meeting of Twitter engineers at 2.36 a.m. Their job? To change the Twitter algorithm to artificially inflate the reach of Musk's tweets by a factor of a thousand, making him the preeminent presence on the site. July 23rd, Musk announces Twitter is now called X. August 25th, Donald Donald Trump, once banned, returns to the platform by posting a picture of his mugshot from Fulton County Jail with the words, election interference, never surrender. Musk reposts the shot. Four days later, X reverses Twitter's long-standing ban on paid political advertising. November 15th, in a post promoting the racist conspiracy theory that Jewish people are importing immigrants to America to fix elections for Democrats, one X user writes, Jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. Musk replies saying, you have said the actual truth. In response, several advertisers, including Disney, Warner Brothers, and Comcast, pause their advertising on X. Musk then tells advertisers concerned by hate speech on the platform, Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. 
Is that clear? Over subsequent months, Musk will become obsessed with the false claim that Democrats are allowing immigrants into America to create more Democratic voters, in effect, stealing the coming election, sharing the claim numerous times with his followers and pushing it to tens of millions more who choose not to follow him. A year later, it will be revealed that Musk, a South African immigrant, worked illegally in the U.S. in the 1990s. November 25th, on X, Musk boosts the Pizzagate conspiracy theory, a long debunked claim alleging high-profile Democrats ran a pedophile abuse ring from a Washington pizza restaurant. March 25th, 2024, Musk loses a lawsuit against the Center for Countering Digital Hate. He'd sued them after they flagged a rise in hate speech after Musk bought Twitter. In his ruling, a U.S. district judge calls Musk's case vapid and says this case is about punishing the defendants for their speech. May 2024, Musk creates a political action committee which he calls America PAC. Its objective is to mobilize a million Republican voters in swing states in an effort to hand the election to Trump. Musk commits to putting tens of millions of dollars of his own money into the get out the vote push and clears his calendar every Friday morning for 30 to 60 minutes to meet with the team he's assembled to run the effort. July 14th, Musk calls Trump on behalf of J.D. Vance, urging Trump to select Vance as his running mate. Vance says abortion is murder and insults women who haven't become mothers. A bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. Musk's phone call is part of a broad effort by Silicon Valley billionaires to ensure Vance is selected. The next day, Vance is unveiled as Trump's vice presidential candidate. September 6th, Trump says that if he wins, he will appoint Musk to head up a government efficiency commission. And Elon, because he's not very busy, has agreed to head that task force. The idea came from Musk, whose companies are currently facing at least 20 federal investigations. If he gets the role, it would give the world's richest man the power to regulate the regulators who hold sway over his companies. Last year alone, his companies were promised $3 billion across nearly 100 different contracts with 17 federal agencies. September 9th, Musk spreads a conspiracy theory that immigrants in Ohio are eating people's pets. The following day, Trump repeats the slur during the presidential debate with Kamala Harris. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs. The false claim leads to multiple bomb threats against the Springfield immigrant community. September 15th and 16th. Over a single weekend, Musk amplifies a conspiracy theory that ABC leaked sample debate questions to the Harris campaign, falsely claims that the Dems want to take your kids, further fuels racist lies about immigrants eating pets, shares with his nearly 200 million followers on X that Trump must win to, quote, preserve freedom and meritocracy in America, and insinuates that it is suspicious that no one is even trying to assassinate Biden and Kamala, adding a thinking face emoji. The U.S. Secret Service confirms that it is aware of the post. The White House issues a statement saying violence should only be condemned, never encouraged or joked about. This rhetoric is irresponsible. October 4th, Musk posts, unless Trump wins and we get rid of the mountain of smothering regulations that have nothing to do with safety, humanity will never reach Mars. This is existential. Musk is the owner of SpaceX and stands to make billions from US government space contracts. October 5th, the user handle at America is taken from an ex-user and given by Musk to his America pack. That evening, he joins the former president on stage in Pennsylvania, jumping about wildly. Fight, 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 vote, vote, vote. By now, he's moved with his senior team to a war room in a hotel in Pennsylvania to focus full-time on the Trump campaign. He speaks to Trump multiple times a week, is doing a series of pro-Trump town halls across the state, and has recruited lieutenants from his companies to join him. October 15th, legal filings from Musk's political action committee show he has personally donated at least $75 million to the effort to re-elect Trump. October 18th, it's revealed that another Musk-funded group called Future Coalition PAC is targeting Muslim voters in Michigan and Jewish voters in Pennsylvania with diametrically opposed political advertisements about Kamala Harris. In areas with large Muslim populations, the group is painting Harris as a close friend of Israel and is suggesting that she's beholden to the beliefs of her Jewish husband. But in areas with large Jewish populations, the ads say Harris panders to Palestine. Simultaneously, Musk is offering $100 to any Pennsylvania voter who signs his online petition as part of an effort to build a list of likely Trump voters. He also starts giving away $1 million a day to a randomly chosen voter who signed the petition. October 19th, it's revealed that the Building America's Future PAC, another Musk-funded campaign group, is impersonating the Harris campaign by setting up a fake website containing fake policy positions, then sending out text messages driving voters to the fake site. 
October 24th, it's revealed that Musk gave his America PAC a further $44 million in the first 16 days of October. October 25th, the Wall Street Journal reports that Musk has been in regular contact with Russian President Vladimir Putin since 2022. October 27th, Musk speaks at the now infamous Trump rally at Madison Square Garden, a gathering characterized by racism, misogyny, and threats of violence. USA! USA! Musk has posted more than 3,000 times on X in the last month, including dozens of unfounded claims about the election which have been viewed hundreds of millions of times. Apart from Trump himself, Musk is now the single biggest spreader of election disinformation. November 5th, Trump wins the presidential election. Elon Musk, a far-right conspiracy theorist, has succeeded in using his immense wealth to help swing the election in favor of a convicted felon. Very well made. Shout out to Led by Donkeys. They perfectly showed how Elon Musk leveraged every single resource at his disposal, whether it's his vast wealth, so that he could buy his social media platform, which he then leveraged to spread disinformation and manipulate the algorithm because he had so much to gain. They said that Elon Musk spent about $119 million of his own money, which yes, of course, that is a lot in raw terms, but the return that Elon Musk will get now that he has soft control over the regulation in America, maybe even hard control depending on how much Donald Trump actually lets him achieve or lets him do, Elon Musk could make tens and tens of millions of dollars. And if you want to know what the end result was, we can't talk about why Kamala Harris lost without talking about Elon Musk. Even this post reads, in a blind test, 80% of voters preferred Kamala's economic policies to Trump. This is not solely a policy problem. The only part of Trumpism worth copying is his charisma and controversy. And yes, there is another point to be made about Trump's charisma, his branding, but the fact that voters actually prefer Kamala's policies, but they have this perception that Trump is stronger for the economy. Trump has better policies, despite not even being able to name any of Trump's policies and liking Kamala's policies better, we can draw the line directly back to Elon Musk spreading disinformation. If you guys want to help boost this video, if you enjoy what I do, drop a like, subscribe, have a great rest of your day, and peace out.